Yes, you read the title correctly, the Mozambique, that little shotgun pistol thing that we've all been making fun of for like five years now, suddenly became the most overpowered, overused gun in the game overnight, with one simple change. And no, I'm not talking about those April Fool's events where your Mozam suddenly becomes a pocket craper. I mean like the regular Mozam that you pick up off the ground is legitimately the best gun in the game right now. Well, one Mozam isn't that great, but two Mozams is a different story. At the recent ALGS Split 2 playoffs in Mannheim, Germany, the Akimbo Mozams dominated the stats board by racking up a record-breaking 1,161 kills. When you add in the kills from a single Mozam, the Mozambique was responsible for 1,285 kills during the course of the four-day event, meaning it accounted for nearly 39% of all kills in the competition. Akimbo Mozams outclassed the next four guns combined, and from what I can tell, this is a record number of kills and the first gun to ever surpass 1,000 thousand kills at a LAN event. The next closest competitor was the R9 during the Year 3 Championship. But what makes Akimbo Mozam so overpowered, and how the heck did we get here in the first place? Sup y'all, my name is Wheaties, and I want to talk a little bit about the history of the Mozam, and maybe speculate a bit on how Respawn intends to fix it in the future. So rewind back to 2019 when Apex Legends first came out, the Mozambique originally only had three bullets per magazine. This was an interesting design choice, considering that the Mozam in Titanfall 2, which is the franchise that Apex is a spin-off from, had six shots per magazine. Magazine. It seems like Respawn originally intended for the Mozam to be the sort of weapon that you try to get rid of as soon as possible. Up until Season 2, there was even an animation that Legends would play when dropping a Mozam, where instead of just dropping it like every other gun in the game, they would throw it on the ground like it was hot garbage that they just couldn't wait to get rid of, like they were furious at it. Which is funny, because that's how everyone else felt about it too. Over the course of the first year of the game's release, the Mozam's magazine would be buffed to four bullets, recoil would be reduced, the spread pattern was tightened, the iron sight's accuracy was buffed, and hammer points were added, but none of that really made it relevant to the game. What did eventually make it relevant to the game, though, was when Respawn released a game mode called Arenas, which might be coming back in the near future. Now, if you played Arenas, you probably remember this gun being an absolute menace, but if you didn't play Arenas and don't know what I'm talking about, then I'll give you a quick rundown. Arenas was a 3v3 game mode where teams would buy guns, abilities, and upgrades, kind of like tactical shooters like Valorant and Counter-Strike, and then they would fight until one side had a two-round advantage or until somebody won a game in overtime if the game went that long. In order to buy stuff, you would get crafting materials, and you'd get those from winning rounds, getting kills, and by hitting the crafting materials that were found on the map. Now, if you're familiar with Counter-Strike and Valorant, then you're probably familiar with how economy works in those games. Sometimes you just need to save money for a round or two and then spend big on better guns later in the game. You could buy low-tier versions of most guns starting in the first round, but the Mozam stood out because its level could be maxed from the get-go. So you'd get a purple bolt and hammer points immediately, making it cheaper than most other options as well as being more deadly. Personally, I'd usually settle for a blue Mozam and save some materials just in case the first round didn't go our way. That was also a viable strat. And people started realizing that the Mozam actually has pretty good range. Like, it was basically a budget wingman in that it was a weapon that could deal a lot of damage per shot, it was usable from a surprisingly long distance, and it had a high strafe speed while ADSing. It doesn't hurt that you could reload a Mozam faster than a flatline or a Havoc or anything similar, and it's also worth noting that Maggie was basically a must-pick for high-level arenas, so that also lended to the power of the Mozam. So yeah, it was actually really good, really cheap, and it quickly became one of the most dominant guns in arenas alongside the Havoc and the Devotional. Quick little side note, by the way, Respawn have known that the Devo and the Havoc were the best guns in the game for at least three years now. They had the data to prove it from arenas, but nobody would pick them because we were too attached to our flatlines and our SMGs, so they couldn't nerf the dang things because nobody was using them in the first place, but we'll make a video about that another time. Once Arenas was removed in Season 16 or early 2023, the Mozam kind of fell off again. And I mean, it never really picked up popularity in the main Battle Royale mode anyways, so maybe it's inaccurate to say that it fell off. And it's funny because it was never actually that bad. As far as stats go, the Mozam was always pretty close to being on par with the other shotguns. In fact, back in Season 16 when Arenas was removed, the Mozam had a time to kill that was better than the Peacekeeper and the Mastiff, assuming the opponent had purple or red shields, and it was on par with the EVA 8, just slightly behind it in its time to kill, so it was in some ways a better late game option than other shotguns. So why didn't it become more popular? The Peacekeeper has typically been the most popular shotgun in the game, with the Mastiff overtaking it on occasion. The EVA 8 has taken the spotlight a handful of times, but that was mainly because it was just sort of broken and too good not to pick up. Normally the EVA 8 has been considered an off meta a shotgun, though not as unpopular as the Mozam. So what makes the Mastiff and the Peacekeeper so much more popular than both the Eva and the Mozam? Well, to understand that, we need to ask ourselves, what do shotguns do better than any other guns? And that's peeking. 
you round a corner, you fire a shot, you do upwards of 90 or 100 damage in one burst, and then you get back behind that corner again so your opponent can't shoot back, thus maximizing your damage output and minimizing your damage taken. Snipers are pretty good at this too, but that's mainly from a distance, and the wingman is good at it, but not as good as a shotgun up close. Now if that's what shotguns do best, at least in a video game, then the EVE and the Mozam both have a problem. They're meant to be fired in sustain. They're not made for peaking, they're fully automatic shotguns that beg the user to hold the trigger down until the clip is fully unloaded. Kind of like what you do with SMGs, or ARs, or LMGs. So in other words, the EVA and the Mozam are good guns, but they're not actually very good shotguns. Like if I wanted to dump a magazine into somebody at close range, I'd just grab an R9 or a Prowler or something like that. And that's been the player base's mentality for a long time. In a lot of players' minds, if they're going to use a shotgun, then they're just going to grab a Peacekeeper for that one-shot burst damage potential. And then Respawn added akimbo weapons. You remember how we said the EVA has only ever been meta when it's been absolutely busted? Yeah, turns out that's all that the Mozam needed to become meta. So we can now dual wield Mozams and P20s like we're in a John Wick movie, and it's awesome, and I love it, but like, maybe somebody should have thought about the Mozams just a little bit more? Maybe just a little bit? A little bit more playtesting, something like that, you know? What makes Akimbo so powerful? Well, walk through a game with me. Say you're grabbing a pair of P20s. They're good off drop, but you're gonna want to grab a light mag, a laser sight, and ideally hammer points, because that will lower your time to kill. You'll get your kills faster. If you don't grab a light mag at least, then you're not gonna reach the max damage potential per clip that the Akimbo P20s can really do. Now that's important. Important. Now let's say you're grabbing two Mozams instead. The only two things you're looking for are a shotgun bolt and hammer points, which actually we can live without those. In fact, adding hammer points doesn't lower the time to kill because it still takes five bullets to kill a fully shielded opponent at purple or red shields. It really just makes it easier to grab knocks on people whose shields are already cracked. So like for the sake of our 1v1s, you can literally just forget about hammer points entirely. Grabbing two Mozams means you immediately have access to a faster fire rate and twice as much ammo per clip as you had before, meaning you can knock two enemies with red shields without reloading and without picking up any extra attachments at all. It is a weapon that requires very few resources to maintain, you can keep two stacks of shotgun ammo and be totally fine for a fight or two, and it's a few fractions of a second off from being the ground loot gun with the fastest time to kill in the game. So no wonder pros love it, it's just really, really good. It makes way too much sense not to pick it up. Yes, it's still not actually very good at being a shotgun, it's more like an SMG at this point, and nobody cares, because it hits like a train and it's got ammo for days. So how do we fix Akimbo Mozams? There's really not an easy answer. You could limit the ammo to like 10 bullets instead of two or something like that, but Logically, that doesn't make much sense since you're holding two guns that hold six bullets each. But like, whatever, it's a video game and balance comes before realism, right? But even if we limit the ammo, how much does that matter? Well, it's pretty significant. I mean, taking those two shots away means that knocking two opponents per clip becomes a lot harder than it was before. At least in the late game when people have red shields. You basically can't afford to miss any shots if you do that. But you could still wipe an entire squad off drop if they have white shields, so... That's still kind of a problem. But then again, we've been able to wipe entire squads off drop with LMGs for years now, so is that really the issue? We could also increase the time that it takes to pull the Mozams out, thus making it a little bit more inconvenient to use them. We could also increase the time that it takes to reload them, which would make logical sense since you're not able to use both hands while reloading each gun. In fact, I'm not sure how they reload them at the moment. Like, which hand is grabbing the ammo if they both have guns in them? Like, eh, it's a video game, so who cares? It would also make sense to increase the hipfire spread, since dual-wielding guns should be harder to aim than single-wielding anyways, but they didn't do any of that during the recent patch, because they're just not ready to. I mean, think of it from their perspective. This gun is finally being used after five years of the game being out. They don't want to jump the gun again and nerf it into oblivion. Plus, there are other weapon buffs and nerfs to consider. Maybe Respawn wants to buff ARs again and make them more prevalent in the meta. Maybe snipers are going to get some love soon. They've been buffing LMGs lately. What if they keep doing that and LMGs become the meta? How might all of that affect the Mozambique? Or maybe the stats from ALGS aren't representative of how normal players are approaching this gun. Like, maybe most people actually think these things suck and they're just too hard to use, so they're not picking them up. So they're being more cautious for now. We'll probably see some word or changes on it next season, so I'm trying to be patient for now. So that is everything about the Mozambique, but what are your thoughts on the current state of this gun? Is it fine? Does it need a nerf? Or is it something that should get hotfixed like immediately? Let me know what you think, and if you liked this video, then don't forget to like and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all in the comments.